Hola amigos, so today we're going to be looking at subsurface scattering, I mean we all we all want to learn it, we all want to do it, I mean I, I didn't even know it existed until I got Octane, and then I started seeing people doing all these cool funky renders of like see through stuff, and I was like I want to do that, and I couldn't do it for ages, and you know eventually tutorials rolled around on how to do it, and they're all pretty good, but they seem to focus on the textures. And that's the most important part, is getting the texture right. But, what about the lighting? You see, between these two scenes here, these were the same scene. The one on the left was done first. And then I took out the background, changed the HDRI, changed the lighting, and started adding tons of stuff in. I went crazy with it. And it came out with the one on the right. And you can see which one's better. That's the exact same material you're looking at, with different lighting. So, what I'm going to go over today is... Lighting! Like, you know, it's just... Meh. The point is here is... Out of all the SSS tutorials I have seen, they've all they've been great. There's been many great artists that have done them, you know, but I just, I really want to dig into the lighting today and how that can help us really achieve true subsurface scattering because when I first done the one on the left, I was like... And then I did the one on the right, and I was just, I was so happy. And I spent like two and a half hours rendering it, and it's just a picture. But I'm also gonna go over all the different types of subsurface scattering. One looks absolutely horrible, and one looks like, um, you know, this. So, w we'll go into that. And of course, you can do subsurface scattering in direct lighting, that's the horrible one. And you can do it on path tracing, which is this one. And it's very easy. It's very, very easy. So I'll go over the textures. I don't want to take away from the other tutorials because those tutorials are there and they're about the textures. But of course I have to go over them. Otherwise you're going to have to go to another tutorial and I don't want you to do that. So the main thing I'll go over right now, quickly, let me just draw all over this like a four-year-old, um, is the lighting in this scene is coming from up here. And it's given us a nice look, it's hitting the edges, it's scattering through, that's what we want. But, and of course that is the HDRI, the HDRI sun is up here along with the daylight, matched. HDRI here is this the main kind of the brightest, but there's a massive window going along here. There's some lights, it's an interior HDRI, but the main, the brightest point was here, so I matched the daylight here and the sun is striking the back of the dragon. I'll leave this model in the description, so if you want it, uh, go download it, it's free. I don't know if it's commercial, but I'm using it. Um, uh, 3D Sky is an excellent site, go, go check them out. Um, so I think the key is backlighting. You know, we've just, we have to backlight this. Because it scatters through almost more harshly because the sun is hitting it on this side, so of course we can see the sun is hitting it on this side. And if I took you into the scene right now and spun the camera around, you would see the other side of the dragon is much more see-through than this side. So, let's get right into it. So, here we are in my unnecessarily big scene where I did not name anything because I'm bad at that. And we're still on path tracing and we have this material here made up of a mixed material, I would suggest that with most subsurface scattering materials, you mix them. Uh, because that way you get a nice contrast between it just looking like a coloured, uh, with a like really good roughness channeled specular to, you know, an actual subsurface scattering material. And the reason I like the path tracing one more is because someone like me that loves to do photorealistic scenes you, you can get that much better where the other one looks a bit I don't, I don't know why you would want to use it but I'll show you how to do it uh, so for this first one let me take out this because we don't need that I was messing about with that it's the medium scatter medium two of these right great I mean finding subsurface scattering was actually pretty difficult and um, I, I 
because I wanted to learn it for ages. I eventually got it though. So we'll do the path tracing one first. I've got it on like 2000 samples so it doesn't sit around 1000, so it doesn't sit rendering away. Uh, you'll notice when I switch the scene to direct lighting to show you that technique, <laughs> and there's just fireflies everywhere. <coughs> Um, because the scene can't really handle it, um, well, direct light and can't really handle it, which is funny. This scene's really slow, by the way. We got this Philip dude chilling in the back who's on his phone. Okay, thank you. Right, so, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to speculate. Great, 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 great. And then we're gonna go to medium, scattering medium. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do this in node editor, it makes life easier. So we've got our scatter medium, we're gonna add two RGB spectrum. Well, that proves I don't use the node editor enough. Plug one in there. I'm gonna do it red this time because, yeah. I think the first time I saw this, it was Zulu Eight, who makes great tutorials. Oh, red and blue. Oh, red and white. What is that? That looks awesome. I'm keeping that. Oh, okay. So we do a bit of this. We do a bit of that. It's nice. You yeah, subsurface, whatever. Cool. Um, next up. We're gonna add image texture. This will be image texture. No, we're gonna add a new material. That'll be our uh, like diffuser type thing. Um, I guess you can set that to glossy. And then you add a mix material. And then I don't know what order, but we'll do that. And you add a float texture to the amount. And you whip this bitch all the way down to like 0 0.075. And then you apply the mix material to this. And then it should be pretty much done. But I'm probably going to take out that blue. Because it doesn't look very nice. I like that at first... But now it's just like getting him away. So we'll go for red. It's probably best to stick to lighter colors, um, more faint colors rather than darker colors. Because if we go into this one here. You can sort of see it's set up in the same way. There's one more thing we have to do. Of course, that's great. It's it's scattering very slightly. We love it. And you come here. And you set this density. Whew. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, here's the thing, when I explained to those images that one was backlit and one wasn't, this is the backlit one. We love it, it's great, yes. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I go in this daylight, and I don't backlight this, and I flip that around, what happens? It looks like the other image. Doesn't look good. It just... Fuck off, Snapchat. It doesn't look good. It looks flat. It looks horrible. Uh, of course, the scene is completely unmatched. It would probably look nicer if I spun the HDRI with it, but it just doesn't... There you go. It's nice. I I, I mean, I was, I was messing about with Subsurface for so long, and I was like, I want the entire thing to be... And of course, you can use harsh lights, whatever, but I don't like doing that, because I like realistic stuff. And... Yeah, it just... That's how you do it, man. That's how you fucking do it. You can whip this down even more if you want. Wait, let's try that blue thing again. That was cool. 
Oh, that was just my double thing blue. That looks cool though, I like that. I like that. I like that. Ooh, roughness, we need roughness. You always need a bit of roughness, you can't go wrong with a bit of roughness. Maybe. We. hot red okay that's that okay we don't need that anymore uh direct lighting here's the thing which i struggled with on the dl one look at it on direct light <laughs> uh, <coughs> um it needs to be set to gi diffuse for this to work uh otherwise it just doesn't i don't know it just doesn't work so shader okay material we could set this to, let's do, I don't know, green? No. Green. Yeah. Darker green. Load the transformation. We set this to the lighter green. Then you go to medium. Scattering medium. And we go like 15. Just waiting for it. And that's it. Like, I told you. It's, I don't like it. I mean, it's good. I saw this one guy that did it in the tutorial. And he made it look really nice. Uh, but he had his scene set up for it. I think if you're doing more, like, abstract renders, this could come off really well. And you can see the scattering happening here. But it's more or less, like, highlights. The light hits it, and it highlights it. And kind of adds a bit of depth to the scene. It looks sort of like a like a like a multi-pass or something i don't know it just it looks weird um but if you mix it that's what i was saying before is if, if you mix it with stuff it looks it looks nice because you can't get this with the glossy material so you stick that in that in there glossy i don't know make it chrome chrome's fun that on there i mean you can mix it with a specular but you're on gi diffuse it's not going to look nice uh how cool would that be if you could mix kernels like you could like bring in like an octane like specular path chasing material into a dl scene and then the only thing in that scene that's like path tracing is the specular material so you can be rendering at a direct lighting like scene but it, you're rendering in path chasing materials that's cool oh toy please do that i would love that because like my computer can't handle path chasing all the time man like it just can't nope oh, wrong way so you want to get some shine on it there you go uh, that looks cool actually i like that it kind of looks like a mossy like it's old I, like i initially wanted it to be like a paperweight uh, that's why i put the newspaper down and then this guy in the back is on his phone. He's very, very rude. I mean, what is he doing sitting on his phone? But just to show you, this is a real scene. There you go. You can see the light up there. That's very much the brightest point. Uh, I didn't try to use too much bloom in the scene. Uh, the books, content browser, textures, I forgot the website name. Newspaper and this dude from this model pack. Uh, coffee cup content browser and the macbook the tf3dm they change the name whatever it's called now but yeah there you go backlight stuff man because if i turn this off right now it doesn't look as nice it really doesn't look as nice especially if we go back to path tracing and we put our original texture on here Look at this dude. <laughs> I used to really like <coughs> the material on this guy's jacket. It was really cool. But if we go back there, it looks okay. Um, he has some nice scattering going on. But that's because the scene's still backlit. But there is some lights over here which interfere with it. Opposed to a nice daylight sitting in there. So... I'm pretty sure that's all I have for you today. Uh, I, I started this render uh, at the start of the weekend, and 
I just I, I couldn't help but think to myself, look, there's tutorials out there on subsurface scattering texturing, but none on how to set up the lighting. So, of course, the only thing I can suggest to you is... Where is it? Here you want. You get your HDRI. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. And you get your sun. And you match your sun to the sun there. As you can see, I showed that in previous tutorials. You match it. Probably should have made it way bigger. I don't know, like 25 if I wanted it to be even more accurate. But I like the scene the way it was. Put the turbidity up, you can maybe put that down a bit, I don't know. I was trying to restrict fireflies as well, I was getting a lot. But yeah, try backlighting. Try, uh, try it, maybe some above lighting, that'll look nice. You just get light shredding down the middle of it. But, <coughs> the thing I'll say as well is, um, let me just, in here. Like I said, is this side has way more light coming through it than the side that's being hit. So that's what I'm saying. Because Axis, my dude, he showed it. It's like in his tutorial, he made it's like shining a light through your hand. And you see, like, one side of it goes all weird see-through, and it looks like Iron Fist. And that's exactly what it's like. Like, there's no scattering going on here. And then you spin it around, and would you look at that? So, that's my little trick. If you've tried subsurface scattering, and it doesn't work, back like that bitch. It works. It helps. So, that's all I've got to you today. Um, thanks for watching. Check out my other tutorials. They've been doing really well. I hope this one does just as well. I got a cool tutorial coming out soon. So thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.